Armitage's fire, dude. Oh, what was that one? What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another School News. Stokadelic here. Wanted to start out with just a touch of FIS coverage here. Actually ended up being the highest scoring trick of the day. So maybe this is a hint that uh, if they're going to take away the option to steeze it out and uh, go swerve style nowadays. Shout out to New Schoolers themselves for providing the only clip of this uh, Matage wall ride to Tokyo Drift pullback. Japan grab bullshit as whoever wrote the New Schoolers article put it. Scoured the internet for a clip of this. No one even tagged Matage in it. Like right here. I don't know if Matage has some agency contract set up behind the scenes here that he's not allowed to be tagged in any post. Seems pretty suspicious the guy's got 68,000 followers at this point and uh, not a single person has bothered tagging him. A couple more ABDs from our insider this week. Young Finesse on this little ledge right here, still online, giving us this 5 off the ledge. Coincidentally, one of our Vishnu OGs was at this spot 10 years ago with the 5 off. Also seems like Jack and Hood Crew's swag is in right now. Uh, Cammy Will, Camden, Camden Williams, otherwise fire part. Straight slides, the triple rail, gap in between the two. My dog, Alec Nelson was here doing that shit nine years ago, and he had the gorilla down. If you didn't know by now, it was a fantastic week to be Alexander Hall. Not only did he score first in uh, this kickoff FIS event, basically at the same exact time we had Magma 3 drop. I kind of wish I had a hot take here. Skiing's best trilogy of all time changed my mind. Can't really argue with Steep Steep here. I can't really name many other trilogies in skiing. Since Magma gets a lot right, I think we highlight the things that they do in case other content creators, producers, filmers, the people in the industry that are watching this channel who are a little bit higher up than some of you may think, Owen, Hunter, and Alex are winners for a reason. First of all, let's talk about the pacing of their video releases. Magma 3 dropped four days ago, 37,000 views, but if you look at some of these smaller ones, like this little premiere tour video they did, a little TGR session video, all of these smaller videos add to a profile of this team that you don't get with a lot of other projects. I think one of the big takeaways here is that you can't just throw money at people who on paper look good together and then expect a good product. What the smaller videos add to is that when you see something like this step over, step down session that they had in the backcountry on Hood, it feels like you're watching clips of your homies. Like it's not these random characters that just pop up once a year and are like, look at how incredible I am. Dudes that you've been following probably all year, just kind of checking in. Maybe you don't catch every video, but it doesn't really matter because they're doing a good job of cultivating a vibe altogether. So when Hunter tosses another fucking triple to end the video, it hits you in a way that isn't like, wow, who the fuck is that guy? It's like, oh my goodness, Hunter just hit another triple, and that's a wrap for the Magma Trilogy. It's one of those moments in time that brings a tear to your eye and makes you call your dad and tell him that you love him. Dad? I love you. Hunter and Alex also works as a duo because they get each other's backs in a bunch of these clips. Like Hunter just had what, uh, Hunter here with a front swap to back swap onto the ledge and then Alex with a back swap to back swap. Small things like this go a long way. Get a clip of A-Hall on this rail that Tucker was on. Doesn't look like it was the same session, but it's really cool to see A-Hall using the whole curve here. Um, I think Tucker's clip was a little bit more technically difficult. But that's a gnarly ass rail to slide. Shout out to Owen and Gavin for kind of sharing these spots when they're filming. I think that uh, in a post resort super session era, these kind of like spot share clips in different videos, same filmers, 
different people, different tricks, yada yada. It's a really good way to keep that bigger sense of community, even though you're releasing that content to like a ski brand or a goggle brand. Maybe it's just like a random crew putting out a video. I think without sessions like this, it's really hard for us to keep that sense of community. It's great that we have Kimbo kind of directly replacing JOI, Joss. And it seems to me like Level 1 made enough content out of this session that they're going to keep the whole super unknown gathering happening. But let's get back to Magma here. As if on cue here, at a minute in, you might start wondering, where's the skiing? Boom. Triple flare. Uh, what was that? Nose butter 9. We spend basically the first six and a half minutes in the backcountry kind of on homie built jumps, slushy snow, good vibes, and then 10 minutes straight basically of bangers. And it's not like every movie can do this, but what they got very right is we spend all of that time in the streets, you essentially forget that Magma is, is partly like a backcountry booter madness type of movie, and then boom, cut to this fucking segment where we just get the music, the, the lighting, the trick selection. Everything I think they said in the interview just like lined up perfectly for this session to happen. Also wanted to shout out one of the current trends we have in skiing, which is like the trick to knuckle bounce to trick. Holy shit, the bouncing for everyone's knees. R I fucking P. Not sure where Owen is going in terms of his future, but if the guy were to direct a full-length drama with, like, Leo starring or something, I would be first in line for that fucking midnight premiere. A couple other crews I wanted to shout out for doing similar things to the Magma crew. Bulldoze does an awesome job at this. Lean In three weeks ago, Preve a month ago, BPC2 a month ago. You get the idea. And a pretty good example of a company that does this well, Surface is also constantly putting out different types of content. For the most part, everything is quality. And I feel like more than anything, what this allows you to do is you can kind of stay quiet in that like six week period that everyone is putting out their content. And in between Lean In, Privé, and BPC2, I don't think you can call any one of these three the actual major film release of the year. And I'll take an easy shot here. A lot of companies don't need to copy what Bulldoze is doing, but they could certainly take notes. It's no secret that Dope Snow isn't really like a company made for athletes type of company, but over the last two years, they've put out four product videos of just like how to work their products because apparently their Dope Times Burn helmet is a difficult product to change. But the last time they actually put out any content with their athletes was three years ago. It seems ridiculous, and both of these are just like promotional one minute fucking I play on Chive TV clips. Big shout out to Ilo putting out the no budget flick. I love this front four, man. The axis on that was fucking awesome. Right after that drops out the third story, a little bit reminiscent of that Cam Riley clip. <laughs> Let's flash forward to Kamase here. I don't like the lack of skiing, uh, what, three and a half minutes in here. I do like Sammy's hat. I don't know if Monster makes these and is selling them now. Little x and Killa fit check for you here. Probably getting close to a 10, maybe like a, maybe an eight here. You got the neutral colors, you got the pops. These gloves are sick as fuck, man. That Beyblade ass symbol. Right at 420 blaze it, Sammy with a Radio 7, what I would call the kryptonite to the flat 3 Japan. I'm gonna call this my prayers being answered for just doing the show in general. I love to see a Radio 7. Radio 7s are billions and billions and billions and billions and times cooler. Sure enough, about a minute later, I get let down. Sammy floats them though, but ugh, there it is. Also, hat off to Sammy for including. I think the first right spinning trick of his last like three videos, we can call it a right 180. I'm gonna call it more of like a right 90 to right 90. I know that Sammy can spin right, but 
in terms of what he wants to spin, he never wants to spin right. So I go ahead and say Sammy can't spin right, just as like almost a provoking thing to see if the dude will step it up a little bit. It's pretty clear that Sammy is breaking ground in the backcountry at this point. To see a little bit more right spinning stuff, unnatural spinning stuff in his clips, I think that would add a certain level of uh, validity to all the stuff he's doing. How top am I? I had a bowl of nails for breakfast this morning. <laughs> yes, so? Without any milk. Uh, right this way. Right around seven minutes in, I think the Ferg starts. Uncle T, doing so well. First class from a hotel. Does Quicksilver sponsor Ferg or something? I feel like they're always using Ferg in Sammy clips now. I'm not a hater of rap in backcountry videos like a lot of people in our community, but I do think that wherever their knob is in terms of like using hype rap for a Quicksilver video, they need to turn it down about 10 notches and they're still going to be around an 8. What we do is if we need that extra push over the cliff, you know what we do? Uh, put it up to 11. 11, exactly. They've got room to play with in terms of like the range here that they need to dive and explore with rap. All of the skiing here is fucking nuts, and when you throw in a song like that, First class from a hotel. it kind of adds a level of corniness that it, it takes away from what's happening. I don't have any official authority on this channel, but I'm gonna go ahead and deem, gonna go ahead and deem this the worst transition of the year. Long ass intro, and weird ass music aside, I feel like this was Sammy's best project in probably three, four years now. Every project that Sammy puts out is impressive. This one just had a certain level and feeling to it. Uh, Sammy's got like this vigor in him this year that's just absolute untamed animalistic energy. What's funny and ironic to me is that out of everyone stealing music from Quicksilver, you would think that Quicksilver would steal music from Quicksilver. Next, I wanted to quickly mention a couple things about Abstract. Pretty quickly, behind the David Attenborough voice and like the whole European castle church whatever the fuck is going on right now shit this is not like a powder movie this is not like a street movie it's some weird shit going on regardless still some good skiing in here shout out mac with the front three swap here the axis on this was fucked dude you can't really call that cork uh i don't know it's almost corked that's pretty much a 45 degree angle right there just looking at the way his feet are kind of lined up with the wall behind him and like we're pretty much at a straight angle right now. I'm not gonna call it a cork three, but pretty damn close. I think my biggest takeaway from abstract was Koga's skiing. Dude was going off in this. Look at this fucking disaster. I feel like every clip that I had to go back and check who it was ended up being Koga. Right here with the Rodeo 5 upside down tap. A little later on hits this crazy dub back. Mac is also proven to be one of those dudes. Here he is with the, call it a front rodeo six out. Front two over the closeout to the switch backy off the roof. 270 onto fakey. 15, 20 foot drop. Switch blunt nine in the backcountry. Send in cliffs in the backcountry. Switch dub Japan nine in the backcountry. Right dub 10 in the backcountry. Switch true nose nine over the cliff in the backcountry. Get on with it. Yes, get on with it. Pause here. Duncan Adams had a very notable segment. Duncan looks happy as a clam in the backcountry, and dude is still doing some gnarly ass shit. I'll take what I can get here. Slash to a very well put together ladies park segment. I don't know what fish setup they're running here, but this shit looks nice, man. That does just fire, dude. Oh, what was that one? And then the other way? This dude's an animal. Sure enough, there it is. 
Next episode, we'll go ahead and review Census and Bucket Clips. I believe two films that are not available unless you're willing to pay as of right now. But regardless, go ahead and do some reviews on this channel for you. I will catch you next time. Have a good one, everyone. Oh.